Now, sometimes in the NCLEX, we stumble upon certain procedures that sounds familiar, yet we never really fully know in depth the important contents or the specific facts and information for that particular procedure. And what I notice is that one of these procedures involves thoracynthesis. Now, I'm pretty sure that if I ask you what thoracynthesis is, you would say it involves a needle going to the chest wall, right? But can you tell me the nursing interventions prior to the procedure, during the procedure, and after the procedure? Okay, now let's go back and talk about thoracynthesis. Now, of course, we all know it's a surgical procedure, right? Now, what happens is that there's a surgical perforation of the chest wall and within the pleural space, right? With what we call a large bore needle. And why is it performed, right? It's performed to usually, it's used to obtain specimens for diagnostic evaluations, right? It can also be used to instill medications. A lot of people don't know that. You can instill medication straight into the pleural space, right? And obviously one of the main reasons would be to remove fluid, which is effusion, right? Or air from the pleural space to help alleviate for a therapeutic relief for a patient, right, from the from the pleural pressure. Now, take note that thoracynthesis is performed under local anesthesia. Now, what do we do as the nurse to locate the effusion site? When I say effusion site, it basically means just the removal of fluid site, right, called the insertion, the needle insertion site. Now, what do we use in order to locate this uh, insertion site? What we can do would be percussion, right? We use percussion, auscultation, obviously, but mostly we use radiography or sonography, okay? Now, when we assess the, the effusion area, which is fluid-filled area, it can usually reveal a decreased breath sounds or uh, a dull percussion sounds. And also, at the same time, we have to be aware of our patient, right? And the patient's going to be in a lot of pain, and the pain is usually due and occurs due to the fact that there's, um, there's an inflammatory process that's going on within the trauma site. Now, one thing that we have to really take note with our patient is that the amount of fluid that we can remove is limited to one liter at a time. Again, the amount of fluid that can re be removed from our patient is limited to one liter at a time and this is to prevent cardiovascular collapse in our patient okay now let's go over the most important things that you need to know for the exam now let's go over the prior interventions prior to the procedure okay now you as the nurse need to ensure that the informed consent has been obtained right obviously and you're going to be providing additional explanation to the client and to the family now Take note that you also need to obtain the pre-procedure x-ray as prescribed, obviously, to locate the, the actual pleural effusion and obviously to determine the insertion site for the needle, okay? Now, positioning. Positioning is very important. Now, we position the client sitting upright with arms and shoulders raised and supported on pillows, okay? Now, again, the position of the client would be sitting upright with arms and shoulders raised and supported on pillows. Now, we, we try to instruct the client to remain absolutely still because of the, the risk of uh, accidental, obviously, accidental needle damage could happen. And also make sure to tell the patient that during the procedure, he or she could not cough or talk, right? Unless obviously instructed by the, the prim primary care provider. Now, during the procedure, we need to take note, right? We need to monitor the client's vital signs, the skin color, and most importantly, the client's oxygen saturation, and that would be done throughout the procedure. Now, the important things that we need to know following the procedure or post-procedure interventions, right? Ask the nurse. First is we're going to apply a dressing over the puncture site, right? And we're going to position the client on the unaffected site for one hour. Again, we're going to have to apply a dressing over the puncture site, Okay, and we're going to position the client on the unaffected side for at least an hour. Now, obviously, we're going to keep monitoring the client's vital signs and most importantly, the respiratory status, such as the respiratory rate and the, the rhythm and the oxygen, oxygenation status. Okay, and now that would be done hourly for the first several hours right after the procedure. Now, 
We're also going to encourage our patient to uh, encourage deep breathing, right? And that would help with the lung expansion, okay? Now, things that we have to take note, right, are complications from this procedure can include shock. Now, with shock, we need to monitor for hypotension, right, and reflex bradycardia because those are the main symptoms of shock, right? Now, pneumothorax could also could happen, so we need to monitor the, the, the client's signs and symptoms of uh, pneumothorax. And the number one symptom that you need to know for your NCLEX would be diminished breath sounds, okay? And also, we're also going to have, obviously, our uh, post-procedure x-ray, all right? And another complication that we need to uh, be aware about would be bleeding, obviously. So, therefore, we need to monitor the client's cuffing and check for any hemoptysis or blood in the sputum, okay? Now, this is it for now, but if you want to see more videos and NCLEX topics and most important contents that uh, you might need in order to pass for your NCLEX, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel below, right? And also, please visit www.allnursingnotes.com. Again, that's www.allnursingnotes.com. And if you want to help me continue doing these videos and at the same time help yourself pass the exam, then you can join my course, which has helped thousands and thousands of uh, NCLEX stickers uh, pass their exam. Again, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I wish you the best in your exam. Good luck and God bless. Thank you.